Welcome back to Vectorworks tutorial six. This is an introduction to 3D modeling now. We've gotten through a lot of our two-dimensional projects. So uh, now that we're moving into a 3D world, before we get there and start playing with a lot of the more specific tools, I think it is important to take a quick look at things like views, rendering, projection, layers, uh, layer planes, working planes, so that you understand how we're looking at all of this. Uh, when we're working in the 2D, you're really just going to be seeing things in top plan view. That's what we see now. We see our little grid here. We're looking straight down. If we were drawing on our desk, we're looking straight down on a big piece of paper. And that is our layer plane. And we are in a top plan view, which means everything is pretty much rendered wireframe. And you can see that up here in your view bar. You'll see we're in layer plane. And you'll see that we are in top plan view and we're in a 2D plan. But when we get into the 3D world, a whole lot of other options come into play. So let's look first at views. Top plan, like I said, is kind of the default for working on stuff. From there, you can jump over using this little drop down menu if you want to a right view or a isometric view or a front view. The other thing to know is that there's another way to get around here and that is your flyover tool. So you can find the flyover tool both in your basic tool palette, it's right here, or if you come down to your 3D tools, if you don't have this tool set up, it's the icon with the red sphere, the blue cube, and the, and the green cone here. That'll bring up your 3D modeling tool set. And it's the first one. It's the flyover tool right here. With the flyover tool armed, you can basically bring it out and then just left click on your mouse and drag. And that'll allow you to drag your drawing around. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel and come right back in. The other way to get that tool up, say you have your selection tool armed and you're wanting to select different things as you're moving around. If you hold down control and then depress the wheel on your mouse, that will quickly bring up your flyover tool as well. So I use that one a lot. That's a really handy shortcut. I think you need to know that one, if nothing else. Uh, because getting around in this space, that way you can really quickly jump into it, select something else, look underneath it, select something else, come around. So control and then depress your mouse wheel. That will give you your uh, flyover tool real quickly. Something else to note, if you're in a regular view, let's say we have a rectangle here. I'll extrude that up four foot. If you jump into like a front view or a right view, if you select that object, it'll bring up these nodes again. And you can use these nodes to adjust your, your, your piece. Now, it won't work if you are in a custom view or if you're in an isometric view. But if you're in a straight view, whether it's right, front, top, etc., you can resize using these nodes, similar to being able to resize uh, 2D objects. So just know that you do have that. On irregular objects such as this, you don't get those options. Uh, but if you're just working with boxes, squares, things like that, you do have the option to resize right in there from a front view, right view, etc. Also something to note, uh, if you're looking at everything from a front view, as you hover over something, you'll see the little cross will come up. You can grab things and move them around in space that way as well. If you hold the shift key, so say I want to slide this up, to keep it from drifting as you slide up, if you just hold the shift key, it'll lock in and make it easier to drag something straight up or straight over. So that's how you kind of move things around in the 3D space. There are other ways, of course, uh, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but that's sort of the basics. 
Moving now into projection, um, we have a couple of different options. The main two are going to be orthogonal or normal perspective. Again, the default when we're in the default when we're in uh, 2D and we're modeling up here, it's going to always default to 2D plan when we are in top plan view like this. But once we break into three dimensions, we have orthogonal and normal perspective. So the, the main difference is that perspective will mimic kind of what the human eye perceives. So objects that are further away are going to appear smaller than objects that are closer. In contrast, if we're looking at orthogonal, that's, that's a parallel projection. So even though this stick is further away, it's going to be the exact same length as this right here. Um, so the mode of projection that you're going to use will depend on the case. If you're working with, um, say, a director and you're trying to show them, you know, what the stage is going to look like and what the, the view from a certain seat is going to be, I'd say go ahead and jump into perspective because that'll give a, a much more realistic human experience of what um, living in this set is going to be like. But if you're just uh, working through your design or if you're sending out images to uh, a scene shop or a technical director for working drawings for build. Um, a lot of times orthogonal might be a little easier for you. So I tend to bounce back and forth between those. They're, um, they're probably the most two common ones. There are a couple others, but don't worry about those right now. So those are your main two projection modes for 3D. Next, we'll take a look at rendering. Um, so up here, we've kind of been working our way across. You'll notice our view bar up here. Uh, so when we get into rendering, that's this little teapot looking icon. The main two you're going to want to know for this are wireframe and shaded. When you're top plan view, everything is going to be in this kind of wireframe. Um, as soon as you break out into three dimensions, it's going to drop you into either shaded or into wireframe. You can change what your preference is right here in your quick preferences. If you don't have this little teapot quick preference, you can just add it in here. But so when I break out now, it's going to be in wireframe. I can quickly jump over into shaded using this. The other place to make changes to um, is going to be over here in view. We'll just come over into rendering and I can change it back to wireframe. The other thing, shaded used to be called OpenGL uh, and it still is OpenGL. I think they're just kind of rebranding it. Um, but the hotkey to get into OpenGL is Control Shift G. I use that one a lot because I usually have my default set to where it'll it'll pop me into wireframe as soon as I jump into three dimensions. And so I want to jump into OpenGL. Control Shift G will put you right there. There are a ton of other rendering options. Uh, you can do sketch where everything looks kind of hand drawn. Um, there's artistic render works and final quality render works and all these different options. Uh, that makes it look like it was kind of drawn in pencil. And you can tweak this endlessly, but by and large, when you're in your design layer and you're actually working up a drawing, really you just need to know wireframe and shaded or OpenGL. Those are the big two. The last distinction I'd like to make for this video is the difference between layer plane and working plane. So when we're in 2D, we're in top plan view, and what we're working on is our layer plane, which means anything I draw, that, that, they're all going to appear on this gridded layer plane. The grid will be a guide as to where that layer plane is. No matter what I draw, it's going to show up there, and it'll say up here, I'm on my layer plane. Even when I have things, um, when I have my views kind of canted like this, even if I'm drawing here, it will still appear on that plane. Now, when we get into three dimensions, we may want to draw in some different places. Say I want to draw along this face, or say I want to be creating objects up here on top of this or on top of this. 
What we need then is our set working plane tool. That's this little pink square. Select that from your 3D tools. And you'll see as you go up here, you can hover over a surface and there's that pink square kind of shadow outline. That'll show you the plane that you're looking at. So if I were to click that on the side, you'll see now that that is the plane that I'm working on. So anything I draw from here on out will be on that same plane that we've just established. That can be super handy. The other mode for that is three-point mode. So if you wanted to have a funky working plane that kind of cut through this object, three points will dictate a plane. And as you can see, our working plane cuts right through there now. So if I draw anything, it's going to cut right through there as well. And you'll notice with working plane, I usually keep it in planar face mode. Um, it's just a little easier for me, and, and I generally don't need the specificity of cutting through something like that. Um, but this one's interesting too. You'll see it'll follow, even on your regularly shaped things, it'll follow the curve of that comb. The other option, when you have certain tools selected, if you go up here to automatic and automatic only becomes a choice like I said if you have a drawing tool selected line uh, rectangle circle arc something like that if you have one of those tools selected automatic becomes a choice so let's go to automatic and you'll notice if I hover over a surface it will turn blue as soon as it turns blue that means that is my new working plane so if I'm hovered there that turned blue and I can draw directly onto that. And I want to draw on this face. Just like that. So that's automatic. I usually keep automatic enabled because it's just such an easier way to move around for me than having to grab another tool, set the working plane, etc etc i will also say once we get into extrusions and push pull and some of the other 3d tools a lot of cool things become available to quickly modify shapes if you have automatic enabled for example with my rectangle tool i just go ahead on here i just click and you have options to really quickly modify shapes so that's the automatic setting up here. And again, you can just jump back to layer plane if you wanted. And then all of a sudden, everything I draw is once again going to be on that layer plane. But that's the difference. There's also another option called screen plane. That's kind of a legacy thing. If you still have screen plane, as if you come up here and you see screen plane, uh, then you're probably dealing with some legacy uh, functions. Um, or maybe you're just using an older version of Vectorworks. Um, I highly recommend just turning off screen plane if that's everything. Uh, and you can turn that off in file, document settings, document preferences, and then up here you tab across to legacy 2D. And just make sure that this legacy 2D screen plane is turned off because that'll, that'll mess you up if you have screen plane enabled. It shouldn't be enabled if you're using 22 or later but there it is. And that's about it for this lesson. Coming up next, we're going to be getting into actually building and extruding and making shapes in the 3D space. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.